Now, count on two, live and local in the Low Country. This is News 2 at 6. Illegally selling palmetto roses leads to a teenager being arrested. Tonight, we hear from those who say a program designed to teach children about entrepreneurship needs to be tossed. And Independence Day of the Low Country, we will tell you about several events happening in the Low Country and where you can see the sky light up. Well, rain left parts of the low country wet and damp this evening, but those thunderstorms didn't last too long, so no need to change your holiday plans. Good evening, I'm Carol and Murray. And happy 4th of July, everyone. Let's go straight to the low country's chief meteorologist, Rob Fowler. And Rob, of course, we are wondering about the skies tonight. Will it mar our opportunity to see these fireworks shows? I think we're okay, Carolyn. Uh, an isolated shower, not out of the question, but nothing like we saw this morning and nothing like the picture again earlier at Folly Beach where it was pouring. Now look at all the folks out on the water. It is packed at the beaches. A lot of folks were kind of cooped up in the house earlier and then once the sun came out they headed out to play and certainly a lot of folks playing in the harbor right now on the boats as you can see just a few passing clouds but plenty of sunshine. Warm temperatures made it up to upper or upper 80s for today. 89 degrees to be exact. It's 87 now but it feels like 93 so as you head out to your celebration make sure you drink lots of water still. This can zap your energy pretty quickly. And the question of the night now is what about the fireworks display? I think we're going partly cloudy going from 84 by 7 o'clock to 80 by 9 o'clock and upper 70s later on. There is a slight chance of rain and the reason for that is we have just these little isolated showers. But if you look at the whole uh, News 2 viewing area, I would say 99% of us are not seeing rain and most likely will not see rain. But again, don't be surprised to get caught under a brief shower here or there. Carolyn, overall looking pretty good for the rest of the night. Rob, thank you. A 16 year old facing charges for resisting arrest and illegally selling palmetto roses in downtown Charleston near the historic Charleston market. News to Deanne Roberts is live in downtown Charleston at the market. And Deanne, you know, this is a pretty common sight to see teenagers and children selling these palmetto roses. Yeah, Carolyn, these are the palmetto roses that we're talking about. And just standing out here for the last hour, I've seen teenagers selling them up and down Market Street. But take a look at this sign right over here. It is illegal to sell these roses if you are on foot without a permit. But the recent arrest is causing a lot of controversy. And the people I spoke to today say these rules need to change. That's a palmetto bouquet. Adrian Wilson is the president and CEO of the Palmetto Rose Company. You ready? It's five dollars. Hand weaving and selling palmetto roses in sweet grass baskets for over 10 years in the downtown market. Wilson surprised hearing the news of a 16 year old being arrested for illegally selling palmetto roses. If they were to focus more so on the um, the resources for the young people and allowing them to uh, to do it in a regulated way, I think it'd be awesome. According to police, while patrolling the city market Monday, an officer approached a teenager after seeing him illegally selling palmetto roses. Police say the teenager attempted to run away, and that's when the officer tried to detain him. But the police report says the teen fought the officer. They fell to the ground. Witnesses helped pull the teen off the officer, and he was finally handcuffed. State Representative Wendell Gilliard met with the teenager and his mother Tuesday, and he says there's a bigger issue here. Here we are in a $9 billion tourist district, $9 billion, and we have young people that don't have jobs. In order to legally sell Palmetto Roses, you have to be a part of the Palmetto Artesian Program, an educational program teaching 9 to 16 year olds business and entrepreneurial skills. Created by City Council in 2007, after concerns of teens behavior while selling the roses, Gilliard, who was a City Council member at that time, says the program needs to be tossed. I think those signs need to come down. The program needs to be revamped. We ought to welcome all these kids. Local tourists believe children selling roses bring extra charm to the city. I think it's sweet and, you know, it's fun to support kids. Wilson says once the city understands it's more than just a rose, it's a culture, things may change. Carolyn, I told you about that program children have to be enrolled in in order to sell the roses legally. That's the Charleston's Youth Palmetto Art and Business Program, which is free. 
for that permit, they have to have proof of completion of that program, as well as proof of their age and a signed consent form by their parents. Local officials plan to protest these rules and regulations, as well as the entire situation this weekend, Saturday at City Hall. I'll have all the details for you on CountOnTwo.com. Reporting live from downtown Charleston tonight, Deanne Roberts, Count On Two. Deanne, thank you. A shooting in Latson leaves a woman injured and Charleston County Sheriff's deputies investigating. Deputies say this morning they went to a house on Farmwood Street after hearing reports of a shooting. They found a woman lying in bed. She'd been shot in the head. She was taken to the hospital and is in critical condition. If you have information about the shooting, please call Crime Stoppers. That number is 843-554-1111. Dorchester County Sheriff's deputies hope you can help them find the woman you see on your screen right now. Her name is Jamie Lee McAllister. Last night, Sheriff's deputies went to the Greenhurst neighborhood in Somerville after reports of a suspicious person. Sheriff's deputies arrested McAllister, but she escaped custody. She now has several warrants, including escape and public disorderly conduct. Call authorities if you know anything about her whereabouts. Well, the city of North Charleston is hosting its 4th of July celebration this evening. This year's events feature great musical guests, food trucks, and a spectacular fireworks show. News 2's Natalie Price is live at Riverfront Park with the very latest on the show. And Natalie, we heard some music just a little while ago. We know that there are jump castles. Give us an idea of some of what you're seeing there. <laughs> Hey, Carolyn, yeah, there is so much going on. Like you said, music, you can still hear that blaring behind me. That is DJ Natty Heavy, I believe. And there are, of course, plenty of things for everyone to do. Kids, adults, food trucks, just about everything you can think of. Now, this all kicked off just about three hours ago. And, you know, like I said, there's just about everything that you could possibly want out here to celebrate our independence. This is a free event that is, of course, open to the public. If you are coming down, though, make sure you bring your own chairs. Seating is not provided provided here. Parking, though, is free and a shuttle is running depending on how far away you have to park. You're going to enter the park at Everglades Avenue and any bags you have will be searched. You cannot bring your own fireworks or sparklers. And some of the events going on tonight, performances by DJ Natty Heavy, the Jump Castle Riot, and Pop Rocks. i got a big family. My wife's got a 10 brothers and sisters, so we all come out and we all get together and have a great 4th of July. Me, I'm a bicentennial baby, so I was born in 76, so that means our independence. It means we're free to do this, this right here. Because we got people that are overseas right now that can't be with us or is no longer with us. Now there are about uh, 20 different food trucks and vendors that I saw around here, so obviously I need to go try all of them. But before I do that, I will mention the fireworks show tonight. That kicks off at about 9.15, so that is something that you don't want to miss. Reporting in North Charleston, Natalie Price, Count On Two. Natalie, thank you. A lot of people on the roads this 4th of July compared to last year. According to AAA, this will be a record-setting year for holiday travel. Count On Two's Rebecca Collette explains the peak travel times and what South Carolina Highway Patrol troopers want you to do if you see someone who's driving drunk. With some 661,000 South Carolinians traveling 50 miles or more away from home this 4th, the best advice to drivers, avoid driving during peak commuter hours on Thursday and Friday. The Highway Patrol's Lance Corporal Matt Southern warns low country drivers to be extra cautious with an influx of visitors to our beaches. We may have folks that are unfamiliar with the area they're coming in. Uh, you know, make sure that you're given safe following distances. Make sure you're driving the posted speed limit. In 2017, the Highway Patrol responded to more wrecks than the previous 16 years. Eight people died and 71 were injured last year. Trooper Southern hopes more people will buckle up. The fatalities that we've seen, uh, nearly half of those folks are not buckled up. Roughly a third of deadly wrecks involved a drunk driver, most often at night. It's three out of four DUI crashes are occurring at night. So there is still that chance, that possibility that a DUI crash can occur during the daylight hours. If you see someone who appears impaired, the easiest thing to do, dial star HP from your cell phone. The dispatcher will want a description of the car and a location and direction they're traveling. 
As for a traffic forecast, it's likely we'll see the largest volume of people on the roadway Sunday afternoon as people return home to prepare for work on Monday. Expect delays up to one and a half times longer than a normal drive. Rebecca Collett, count on two. We now know, of course, that fireworks can be mesmerizing to adults and children. Certainly very enjoyable to watch, but we also need to remind you tonight that they can be dangerous, certainly can lead to injuries. Doctors recommend you protect your eyes by wearing sunglasses. You can also use earplugs to protect your hearing from some of the loud sounds you might hear tonight. Doctors say this is the time they see a lot of burn injuries too. Unfortunately, see blindness from eye injuries, hearing loss, limb loss, you know, children can lose or adults can lose arms, legs, parts of their body, uh, obviously trauma to pets. Pets can go running um, and get lost as well in the midst of fireworks. So we recommend that it be left uh, to adults. Doctors say you can dispose of fireworks by soaking them in water before you actually throw them away. Here in Mount Pleasant tonight, the sky will light up over the Charleston Harbor. The staff at Patriots Point working around the clock to prepare for tonight's fireworks show aboard the USS Yorktown. 2,000 pounds of fireworks will fill the sky and visitors will experience great food and lots of wonderful live music. One thing we ask people to bring is to pack their patience. And you know, there's a lot of people who are all out here to have fun. Uh, just be patient and thank the police officers that are working on their 4th of July to make sure everything runs smoothly and uh, just come out here and have a good time. You can sit in the grassy area at no cost if you want to enjoy the fireworks show, but parking around Patriots Point is $10. You can bring tents and coolers as long as they are set up by 8 o'clock tonight. The firework display starts at about 930 and a quick reminder, you can't watch from the Ravenel Bridge walkway. That area will close at 8 o'clock tonight. This is also the night that a lot of animals run away from home because they are frightened by the sound of the fireworks. The Charleston Animal Society says they expect to see an increase in animals over the next few days. Right now, the facility is already overcrowded. The building can only house 250 animals. Right now, we are told they have 700. Overcrowding can, of course, be harmful to pets. The longer they wait, uh, the more likely they are to get sick. So they'll get a cold just because they wait, just like you would if you were under a lot of stress for a long time. Um, so that can happen, and that's the kind of thing we see a lot this time of year. The shelter is offering a free waived adoption campaign through Sunday. And we have a few 4th of July celebrations to remind you of. First, fabulous 4th in the creek in Goose Creek. That starts tonight at 630. Visitors will enjoy live music. There will be food vendors and a fireworks show finale. It takes place at the Goose Creek Municipal Center. You can also attend the Uncle Sam Jam from 7 tonight until 11. That's happening on the Mount Pleasant Pier at Harry Holman Boulevard. And finally, day one of a three day Independence Day celebration happening at the Joe. The Independence Day fireworks super show starts at around 630. 35 tonight. Next on News 2. A camp changing the lives of children diagnosed with cancer. We will tell you why this camp is so special this year. The Charleston River Dogs playing their first 4th of July game since 2015. I'll have a preview of the game and we'll hear from General Manager Dave Eccles coming up a little later on in sports. All right, time for our fishing forecast as we're heading back to the waters again for tomorrow with a low tide at 732, high at 137 in the afternoon. Winds out of the east at around 10 knots or so. Tomorrow's rain chance at 40%, a little lower than it was, especially the first half of the day today. If you're heading to the beach, most likely a better beach start tomorrow, 81 degrees by 9 a.m. Still a few scattered showers and thunderstorms after lunchtime with the UV index 10 very high. You're watching News 2 at 6.